You can't just block forever. This isn't Tekken. Fine, I'm taking the samples. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Stop. Please! Yes! My god! I'm gonna need a replay. I'm gonna need a witch doctor. That man may as well just live a new life as a giraffe. My god. I see you, punk! Keep running! Dying Light, bad blood. It's got nothing to do with Taylor Swift and everything to do with beating the shit out of everybody. <laughs> God damn, don't you ever bring a knife to an axe fight. Formal stuff first, thank you to Techland for sponsoring this video. The game is in early access and available through the Founders Pack at the link below the video, which not only gives you access to unique skins and new content as it comes out, but also lets you shape the development of the game with continuous updates to weapons, gameplay, the map, and so on. One more time, the link to the game is below me, and one more time, early access. So if you see me smack the shit out of somebody so hard that they turn into Stretchy Man Mr. Fantastic, just know that's a feature that may or may not be tweaked in the future. My lord, I hope they never change that. That ragdoll is perfect. Bad Blood is a 12-player battle royale that Techland is calling a brutal royale that I like to call a beating royale. I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here, but it's impossible to escape the fact that every player is basically a human punching bag. <laughs> Hey, come on, buddy. Don't run away. It's just a warm-up. The goal of the game is simple. Survive! Or more specifically, evacuate, motherfucker. Via the big fancy chopper that only has one single seat. Said fancy chopper will not show up until one of the players has collected enough blood samples from zombie hives, which makes your mission easy. Get the blood and get the fuck out. Please don't crush me. Please don't crush me. Please don't crush me. Okay, I got it. Kiss my ass, you rotten motherfucker. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Even though they're competitors, I'm always respectful. It's a little more complicated than that, but just give me some time here. The game starts with you dropping into a random spawn. No skydiving, no need to say, where are we dropping, boys? Because it's not up to you, and it's probably the hood of a van or a giant ball of garbage. And the loading screen here ain't playing games, because with the rounds only lasting 10 to 12 minutes, there's no time to waste, and it is full throttle the whole time. So pick yourself out of those trash bags and start looting. I say looting because looting is the common BR term, but I should say hoarding, because you better be grabbing everything you can get your hands on from two or three rooms slash train cars slash shacks and sprinting the closest hive. I'm sure the average person watching is gonna ask what I'm doing with five landmines. Like, oh, what can you do with five landmines? When they should be asking what can't I do with five landmines? Arrive at the hive and you've gotta clear the zombies guarding it. Mollies are good, explosives are better, you can even just rush it if you're quick enough. As long as you get the sample without being interrupted like you're mooching at Costco, you're golden. Samples! Once this happens, you level up with increased health, increased strength, and a full restoration of your health pool. So the game hands some rewards you for focusing on the objective before it's on to the next hive. But as you're parkouring your way there, make sure you pick up more loot, because the bigger the hive, the bigger the sample, and the bigger the zombies guarding it that are ready to crush you like a Mountain Dew can during an MMO raid. God, what is this guy swinging? It's like concrete and rebar. <laughs> Yoink yourself enough of these samples, and in comes the chopper to the extraction zone. But the evac is no cakewalk, because you become a marked man with everybody knowing your real-time location. And the chopper won't take you until you've cleared out the helipad of any players challenging you. So making it there first doesn't guarantee victory, and other players can still murk you for your samples and win the game. Not today, guy. Not while I'm two levels high. Is that a gun? Is that a gun? Since when are there guns? I feel like Joe Budden right now. Where did he get a staple gun? Who is the employee that sold that man a staple gun? I guess now is probably a good time to cover the PvP portion of things then. Although the game is simple, getting blood and getting the fuck out, that doesn't mean it's easy because there's 11 other guys that are trying to accomplish the same thing and they are more than happy to slash your hopes and dreams with a scythe and take your samples and loot. Oh, shit. Shit, he hit me hard. Wow. LeBron's Jameson out here slashing hopes and dreams. As a general rule, crime doesn't pay. Or should I say, cheese doesn't pay. I know you may be thinking that the key to victory is punking some guy like me with a bunch of samples while he's low on health and loot after fighting a big ass zombie, and occasionally you would be right. Come here, boy. Come here. No. No. Oh my god, that molly. Wow, that, that was like 115 to zero. Just we're staying in that molly for about two seconds. 
and he gets all of my vials, and now he's good for the chopper. Damn it. But for every one of those times, there's ten other times where I turn around and slap your shit because I'm probably a higher level from collecting more samples already, and I probably have armor from taking down big zombies. So instead of you punking me, you're punking yourself. Armor, samples, arrow, arrow. Of, of course somebody shows up with a gun. It's like this happens every time. Let me hit you with... One of those, and one of... Oh! You want something too, boar? Parry, and hit, hit, yes, bleed, bleed, yes. And I'm gonna turn around and hit him with a bomb, yes! We did it, 2v1. 2v1. I'm out of here. Later, nerds. So I may have my character decked out in the cheesiest American flag pants, 80s windbreaker top, and literal cheeseburger mask outfit ever, but I repeat, cheese doesn't pay. And if you want to up your win rate to the ascended level of the beef master here, looting is the place to start with two different types, weapons and equipment. Weapons are primarily melee that range from light to heavy and sharp to blunt with everything from a swift dagger to carve up your enemies like a watermelon or rather with a watermelon if you're running the right skin. Watermelon! Watermelon! Yeah! Just when you thought that my track pants and my gigantic burger face was too much, I start killing people with fruit. All the way to cumbersome two-handers like the splitting axe that may be slow and may be awkward, but hits like a fucking freight train. Just die! My god. Wow. Case closed. Apparently one splitting axe swing is equivalent to like 10 dagger stabs. I like to keep one weapon as a permanent primary that hits quickly like a dagger, bat, machete, or hatchet, and the three remaining slots I call random shit that I'm going to throw at people. Yeet, yeet, catch buddy. Bleeding out of my chest. Hold this for me. Wow, that did like... 70 damage. I just dravened his ass. Every primary weapon can become more powerful with upgrades scattered around the map. Because what's scarier than a cricket bat with a chameleon on it? <laughs> How about a cricket bat with a chameleon on it with a bunch of screws sticking out of it that can make your enemies bleed their own bad blood? Or how about a hatchet that locks people up mid-animation like Mr. Freeze? I think you get the idea. I love the simplicity here because there's no need to worry about scopes or mags or muzzle attachments. It's more like like, hey man, you think I can find any screws for this fucking baseball bat? The bow and arrow is god tier. It not only does a shit ton of damage, knocks back, and forces passive bleeding damage until they remove the arrow, but it's the ultimate cheese counter. Gotcha, girl. Parkour to the rescue. Oh god. Oh god. No. No. With 10 health, are you. Oh fuck. That hurts. That hurts. Oh god, oh fuck, oh god, oh Oh! Did he hit a mine or was he cooking a grenade? Whatever, at least I got my arrows back. Throwing axes are like a secondary bow because they're equipment and don't hit as hard, but still, the major advantage of a bleed is that the guy is gonna need to stop and pull it out sooner or later to avoid bleeding out, which makes him an easy target to smack in the face. I go hard in the motherfucking tank! You can't forget about explosives like mines to send enemies sky high, grenades for killing everything around, including yourself, and mollies because there's plenty to be purged in holy fire! Mine? Mine. Ah, bet you didn't see those coming, buddy. What are you, what are you gonna say? Oh. I guess I didn't see that molly coming either. Important to note that once you pull the pin on something throwable, like a molly, arrow, or throwing axe, you can't cancel the action. So yes, you can cook your grin. <laughs> Medkits and painkillers are available, but not abundant, and there's even shields for blocking. But just like a passive Monty, if you use it in a defensive instead of an offensive way, you're just waiting to die to a more aggressive opponent. No, 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 no! Should have seen that coming. Guns are extremely rare, have super low ammo, and from what I saw, can only be obtained via blue parachute crates that are defended by three AI that are better at combat than 90% of the human players in the game. Oh, let's burn it! 
Damn! So their immense power is balanced out by the high risk of other players, time it takes to murder the AI, and the overall delay spent away from collecting samples. Will you sometimes hit bad luck and get blasted away by some rando with a shoddy? Yes. But he probably sacrificed time, resources, and health to get that shot. So in a certain way, he deserves the advantage, and this serves a greater point here. All of the lethal shit at your disposal is always going to be a trade-off between speed and safety. For example, a molly can rapidly incinerate a group of zombies, turning a 35-second sample collection into a 5-second sample collection because they're dead so quickly. Speed. But as you saw earlier, oh. that same molly can often be the difference between life and death if you run into another player trying to yoink your samples. Safety. This applies to virtually everything you pick up. Like the bow and throwing axes can really melt a goon or a demolisher defending a big hive, but they can also save your life against a player with more health or better gear. Get the hell down from there, Jiggly. As a general rule, I go for speed over everything. I'll loot my ass off while parkouring in between or right next to objectives, but I'm out here to carve up baddies, collect samples, and outpace everybody, treating it more like a race than a death match. What? That is the entirety of both of our weights right on his neck. That way, I have more health and damage from my higher level, more armor from big goons, and a greater chance of trampling anybody in my way. How did you not see me? I'm in American flag pants and a multicolored 80s windbreaker. I... I expected better Cheetos and Kush. The end game helipad is such a brawl, it'll teach you how to consistently win fights, i.e. throw all of your ranged shit at them, try to blow them up, parry if they melee, kick if they parry, and fight as unfairly as you can. Because a knife fight is a whole lot easier to win if you whip out a gat. Ah, oh, the sensitivity! It's so different! No! Dodge! Dodge! Yes, we got him! Thank God he's the last one, because I don't know if I would have survived the next guy. And I think you've noticed by now, but I went wild with the customization that applies to both your character and the weapons you pick up. You want a magical mountain glass dagger? Done. Chameleon cricket bat? Easy. Dinosaur looking hatchet? Yup. There's plenty of neato skins to stare at while you're slicing people apart, because I've always wanted to kill someone with a watermelon, and the enemies are gonna need something to stare at while you're beating them into submission. Why not slap a burger on your face and high-five yourself at the winter circle? It's the only way to establish beef master dominance, and you can't beat the meat. And that is about it. I would like to thank you very much for watching. One final thank you to Techland for sponsoring this video, so don't forget about the Founders Pack that's just below me, and be sure to tune in next time when we fly a helicopter with more than two seats.